Hey guys, it's Tackle Freak here, and welcome to episode 8 of my custom story creation tutorial for Amnesia Rebirth. And today we're going to be talking about sound. Specifically, we're just going to be going over the basics of sound, um, seeing how you can play uh, sound effects in your level, repeating sound effects wherever um, it's appropriate, and uh, just kind of show you guys how you would use some of the functions in your script file to uh, have things happen. Um, going forward, since we talked about um, some scripting on an episode five a couple episodes a few episodes ago um i'm going to make mentions to any re uh related scripting functions that we're going to be using um so if we're talking about sound i'm going to show you guys some of the basic sound functions that you want to know um and going forward if we talk about any other things like that um i will be mentioning uh related uh related functions that you'll want to know for those kinds of things um all right, so with that out the way, let's go ahead and get started. Um, first thing we're gonna do is we're going to um, we're going to talk about just placing sounds in the level. And I want to make a mention to something about sounds. So first thing we do we're gonna do is um, just clicking on the sound on the, on the left here. It's number seven. Um, and then once you get this, you can give it a name, and then you can give it a sound file to, to play. So um, these sound files. They're typically stored as SNT files, but here's the thing, you, you can't really find these inside of the root directory of Amnesia, uh, Amnesia Rebirth. Um, I think they have it like copyrighted, so you can't actually see the files themselves, like the OGG files and the SNT files, you, you can't actually see them. Um, so um, you can't actually take them and edit them yourself or anything like that, or edit any of the values that they have. So um, you're, you're kind of stuck with certain settings um, when you use their, their sound effects. Um, in the future, we will talk about importing your own custom sound effects. Um, but for now, I'm just going to be showing you the basics and showing you how you can just imp start in implementing these sounds in your level. Um, so um, anyways, w w yeah, so you have to select from here. Um, you can't like, you know, get their sounds and make any edits to them. So um, what we're going to do is... Um, uh, we're gonna select the sound here and I'll make more sounds in a second um, we're gonna hit the ent the level entity shared here and uh, typically these where a lot of the sound effects are stored under like level entity shared things like unlocking door and stuff like that and fire sounds and stuff um, what I want here is the a fire sound and what I want is a wall torch um, and we're gonna do wall torch burn and we're gonna load up that one here and now we have it here um, we can give it a name. Um, I think it auto generates. It doesn't auto generate, but we won't really re be referring to it by the name um, there. Um, we will change this name here for the actual uh, object itself. Um, so um, we're gonna take it and we're gonna put it over here for now. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put like a, a wooden beam or something here, and I'm gonna set it on fire uh, with a particle, and then we'll like have the sound play like this burning sound, so that it kind of sounds like a, you know a burning fire. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to go to static objects here. I'm just going to find uh, some kind of like wooden beam or something. So I think it's under interior, under tower. And let's just get this like broken beam here. Um, uh, let's see. Let's get it out of the ground here. Uh, yeah, that'll work fine. Um, we're going to, it is a static objects. So we're going to, um, we're going to rotate it here. So, um, Let's get our rotate tool here. Now let's turn off the grid here. Uh, we'll get that like this, and then we'll just bring it down to the ground. All right, so we got it right there. And I just want to start a fire on it right here. Um, so I'm going to get a particle here, and um, I'm going to go ahead and select the particle file. Um, it's going to be under particles. We're already in the particles. We're going to go fire, and let's do blazer fire, and then we'll drop it right here. And we'll bring it up and we'll kind of just put it where I think it looks best. So we'll put it like right, put it like right here or something. Yeah, so um, maybe a little, a tad more to the left. Yeah, that's fine. So um, so we have a fire here. Uh, now I want to get the sound effect uh, right up on the fire. So let's uh, go ahead and do that. So put it right, put it right there. And then right, right up on there, yeah. So I'll put it real close so it, it sounds like it's actually coming from there. So now let's talk about the actual sound itself here. Um, so 
Uh, initially, you can just these are just the position settings, but you can set it whether you want it to be active or not. Um, this is useful in case you want to activate it later on in your script or something like that. Um, but for now, I'm just going to show you the ba very basic, basic sound, um, and, and and it's just a sound that I want to play repeatedly. Um, and we're going to go to the next tab here. We're going to go sound, and um, and here here and here's the uh, here's the thing with these values here. So um, the data, the the um, SNT file that we loaded has pre preset like um, values, preset information. Um, it's preset to have a, min a minimum distance of one, a max distance of two. One shot means that it only plays the sound once. It sets a false, which means that it will play repeatedly. Um, and then this one, I don't have a definition for. Um, but I, I might touch upon this one when we start talking about making custom sounds um, and um, pretty much um, pretty much what this means since this just had to false this is going to be a repeating sound and this will be this will be pretty much uh, because it's like just a burning flame it's just going to keep repeating like the burning sound effect and uh, it sounds pretty you know natural some sound effects don't have one shot on and in which case it'll only play once um, you set the volume here and if you don't want to use these two you can check this box and then change it to your own values here um, we will use just the default that they have here um, and the default volume as well um, and um, and this is where I mean um, it can be kind of limited because you can like you know change some of these here because these are tied to the um, the SNT file um, and um, we will we will we will again. We will touch upon um, custom sounds and SNT files and stuff, and and uh, make mentions of that in the future. But for now, um, we're just going to use what they have here, and this is just a rolling sound. And we're going to do more more with this in a second. But first, let's just go ahead and load up into our level and see if our sound is working fine. So let's uh, let's go ahead and switch over. All right, here we are back in our custom story. Um, so we're going to go ahead and walk over this way and you should hear, start hearing the sound playing. We get closer, you can hear it gets louder. Um, so clearly the sound is working, you can hear kind of like the burning. I don't think it's a, an appropriate sound effect here for this one. I think I could probably change it to like campfire or something, it might sound better. But um, uh, we can hear the sound, it's working fine. Um, now let's go ahead and exit here. Alright, so we're back in our level editor now. So. Uh, uh, clearly we saw it worked. It was just, uh, you know, it's a repeating sound and stuff. Uh, you can do that with any of the other sound files in here. Some of them only play once. Again, just keep an eye out for this one shot uh, um, one here. So um, that was good and all, but let's talk about a little bit, getting a bit more detailed with it using the scripts. Um, so um, what I think I want to do is I want to show you guys how you can like, let's say disable sounds and re-enable sounds in your in your uh in your from your script file um typically the first ones that exist and then we'll talk about creating ones and stopping ones that don't exist in your level um so so first thing i think what we'll do is we'll we'll do something kind of a bit silly here what we'll do is when this bottle breaks um when this bottle breaks we'll have the uh sound effect stop uh stop and then I think when the player interacts with the door, um, we'll have the sound effect uh, resume. So let so let's do that. Um, these are probably not permanent changes for this story, just kind of just for example. Um, so um, so let's do that then. So let's start here. Um, uh, we're gonna go to our bottle here, and we're gonna go to the entities tab here. And in episode five, we did set up some of these callbacks here, but. We have an on break callback function here so when the bottle breaks it will execute this function um, in our in our script file and do something that we have it do in there um, so what we're gonna do is just go to let's go over to our script file or and before that as well um, we have a callback on the door as well for when the player interacts with it called on interact player door one and again we did this in episode five um, and it will call this function in our script file and we'll have it do something uh, in this case, we'll have it resume the sound. So now let's head over to the to the script file over here. All right, so uh, so here we are. Zoom you guys in. Um, so we're gonna talk about the two collide callback, the two uh, callbacks that we had here. So the first one was uh, it was on interact player door one, 
and it was also I believe on break yeah on break bottle one so we're gonna do some stuff here um, so first we're gonna talk about disabling the sound so um, we're gonna use a we're gonna use a function this is only specific to sounds that already exist in your map like if it's placed in your level editor the sound object is there um, this will this will play the um, this will this will play it or stop playing it uh, depending on which function you use so we're gonna do sound and we're gonna do underscore and we're gonna do play you can already see it right here um, sound play and it tells you what parameters it takes here but I'll, I'll talk about these right now um, you can actually omit the last one which is just uh, true or false telling you whether asking you if whether or not you want to any fading any fading sound effect to stop that's currently in progress on that sound um, but by default it's equal to false uh, it tells you right there it equals false by default but you could set that true um, if you wanted to um, let's put our semicolon for now and um, all right so the first, so the first line that you're going to want to put here is going to be the name of your sound object in the game, in the level editor. So um, if we go back, we, I don't believe we gave it a sound. So let's, uh, let's head back here. Um, I have you guys zoomed in, but um, you guys should be able to see it here. Um, if we go to the sound object, it's just called sound one. You can see it right here. Um, we're going to rename it. We're going to say fire, we'll do fire sound one fire underscore sound underscore one um and uh we'll hit save on this on this level so let's uh let's reopen our uh our, our program here um so now uh we're, we're gonna go ahead and type that in we're gonna do fire sound one and uh so now uh now we need the second line here and this is going to be the fade in time. So, um, at, uh, like how quickly the sound should fade in. Um, so I'm going to do, uh, 1.0 F. Um, so the sound will fade in, um, in one, it, it will fade to full volume at one in one second. Um, if you wanted this to be, if you wanted to have no fade, you can just set this to zero. Um, but, uh, we want it to fade in, uh, with, a with a with one set in one second um so now we should be able if we were to start up the level now we should be able to just break this bottle and then that sound will start playing um, um actually uh eh, we did a bit inverse i was planning on doing it the other way but this will work fine so when you break the bottle the sound will continue to play and so now we're going to do the opposite of this and on the door when we interact with the door we want to stop uh, stop the sound so um, we're gonna go down here and we're gonna to, uh, make a new line here. Um, and we're gonna do um, sound and we're gonna do stop. And then it's gonna be the same values as, as above. So we're gonna do, you know, fire sound one. Uh, and then after that, we're gonna put in the fade in time. Same thing, 1.0 F and uh, we're going to close the uh, colon there. Uh, so now the sound, the sound fire sound one in your level will stop over the course of one second. It will fade away in one second. Um, so then this is pretty much, it's pretty much ready to test. Um, uh, so let's go in and test it before we talk about the next, before the next uh, lines that we're going to be talking about. Um, so let's go ahead and launch our game. All right, so here we are back in our, uh, in our level. So we're gonna go over, and first thing we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and hear the sound effect, make sure it's running. So I can hear it, it's burning and everything. We have the sound effect playing. So we're gonna go ahead and go over here and we're gonna interact with the door. And what should happen is that the sound effect should stop playing once we get near it. So let's go ahead and interact with the door. And now let's walk back over. And we shouldn't hear any sound coming from it anymore. Nope, I don't hear anything. The sound's gone. Um, there's no sound coming from it anymore. So now let's go over to the bottle over here. Let's go ahead and break it. So once we break it, the sound effect should re-enable. So let's go ahead and drop it. And let's go ahead and walk back over now. And yep, there it is. The sound effect replayed. So that's how you pretty much toggle. That's pretty much how you toggle the sound effects um, on and off for sounds that already exist in your level. Um, but now we're going to talk about how you can play sounds and create sounds in your level. Um, 
when you don't want to actually add it in your level editor. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so here we are back in our uh, in our script file here. So um, those two work fine. So now what I want to talk about is uh, creating sound at, at an entity. Uh, we want to play a sound effect um, at an entity in their level. So let's go ahead and go back to the level editor here. Um, and I just kind of want to decide where I kind of want to put it. Um, uh, where I want to play this the sound that uh, this entity sound um, so I think what we'll do you know what we'll do um, we will okay so what we'll do is we will just go over to we'll go we'll, we'll do it on this chair over here so we'll have the chair play a sound effect so I want uh, I want to have the chair just play a sound effect when we get near it um, I think I'll just do the same sound effect Effect. Uh, yeah, we'll do the same sound effect just uh, just to make it simple. Um, so we'll have it play that that fire burning sound, and we'll do, and we'll have it disabled too. So um, so let's go ahead and do that. So um, let's go. To, so we're not gonna place down any sound any sound objects in our level. We're just gonna go straight to the editor now. Um, let's give this chair a name. Let's call it like chair one, just to make it um, easier to. Um, to uh, remember the name, so let's put that and let's save that up. Let's go back to our our uh, our, our software here, and um, so what we're gonna do is let's have it. Let's see, where can we do it? We'll do it in the. We'll get rid of these sound play um, these sound play uh, options here. So let me get rid of it here, and um, and yeah, we'll we'll do it in the same spots pretty much just for for demonstration. Um, so there we are. So um, we'll do it the same way. When you interact with the door, we'll have the um, we'll have the sound effects start um, start playing, and we'll have it. We'll do it where. Oh, we'll do it the same way. We'll do bottle playing, and then we'll do door stopping, um, and um, and yeah, yeah. So we'll do it like that. Um, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use the we're gonna use the function sound create. And we'll have a, we'll have a few here that come up. They have they have a few here, um, but we'll do have we'll do the original sound create an entity, and um, this one because you're creating a sound, you can actually set a whole bunch of options, which is why it can take this many parameters here, um, and we'll talk about all the parameters uh, one by one, um, but uh, let's go ahead and just click it here to add it. Um, and we'll add, go ahead and add the semicolon here. I don't I always hate to forget that. Um, so let's go ahead and start going over what the um, what the actual options do. So um, first thing, so first thing is going to be the sound name, and this is not an actual sound um, like object name in your level editor. This is actually just a sound, a, a name given to it in your script, so you can reference this sound whenever you want. Um, so. For, so this is not an actual this one you can actually make up yourself they do have a bit of a convention for this they usually do sound underscore and then the name of the sound effect so the name of the sound effect that we're gonna be using let's um, let's go ahead and go back to our level editor um, this is the easiest way to find the names of these we need the full path to I kind of want to show you guys um, how you do that so what you're gonna do is you you can place down a sound object or something like that. Um, uh, let's do it like that. So we'll click it there and we'll hit the sound file dots here. And we just want we're just interested in the name of the object. So um, if we go uh, level entity shared fire wall torch wall torch burn that's the whole path to that file. Um, the easy way we can just click it here and then we can just do Control C to copy all of that. And then we can, and let's go back to our um, to our uh, our editor here, and um, we'll just paste it down here for a second. But the name of the sound effect is Wall Torch Burn. So what we'll do is we'll call it Torch Burn. So that's just the convention that they use for the name scheme. Um, so you can follow that along. Of course, you can do your own name there. 
and then the next uh, the next item you got to put here is the path to that um, entity that that sound file and that should be this pa this path right here that we just copied so let's go ahead and copy that and let's put it in between these quotation marks here um, and that's a full path to a level entity shared fire wall torch wall torch burn so that's the sound effect that we want to play this one right here um, and again, this is just the name that we're giving it in our script file so that we can reference the sound when, later. And we will reference it when we want to stop the sound. Um, but we'll do that in a moment. So let's go ahead and put another comma here. And I'll talk about the next line here. And that's entity name. And that's going to be the, the uh, name of the entity uh, that you want to play this sound effect on. So we said it was going to be chair uh, underscore one. And make sure you put that in quotation marks. So we do chair one uh, and then we're going to hit a hit a put a semicolon there and then uh, space it out and um, then next um, next actually so okay so let's stop here for a moment so this is the only three values you need to get this this function to run properly everything after here are extra parameters that you can provide um, usually uh, usually it depends on the use case for this um, in this if you're just gonna play a sound one time and be done with it this is typically um, this is typically the, how you would call a function but um, we're gonna talk about some other ones of course you can use it however you want but uh, we're, I'm just gonna talk about the other parameters you can put in the next parameters you can put in are gonna be fade in time and and uh, whether or not you want to save sounds first fade in time um, we're gonna do the same as the last one we'll do 1 point uh, zero F so it'll fade in over uh, one set over one second um, and then we'll go ahead and hit comma here and we'll go to, uh, to the next line here uh, and then the next one is gonna be whether or not you want to save the sound so what this is um, if you want to save the sound I said this is gonna be true or false so let's say you say true if you say true here it means that you want the game to save that sound effect in uh, your com in the computer's memory in the person's computer's memory so that it can be used quickly again when you need it um, this is more for memory management than anything else but um, if you plan on using this sound effect again in your level you should use this you should set this to true if you only plan on just running it once then you set this to false so um, uh, I'm going to say true because this is typically rolling effect, rolling sound effects. You can end up using more than one for it for and exactly like this with a fire or something like that. Um, so I'm going to say this is true. Then we'll hit comma um, and at this uh, and then at this point um, you could just uh, finish the function right here. You could save and you can run and this will work too. But um, I'm going to talk about some of the other options that you have here. So um, if you do comma here and you add another line, so here we can put in a float for uh, the volume between zero and one. So if you wanted to have, you know, full volume on that sound effect, you would do 1.0 F. If you wanted like half volume, you could do 0.5 F. Um, we're just going to do 1.0 F uh, for full volume. Um, and then the, there's going to be two more that you need to know. Um, it's going to be min distance and max distance. So these are pretty self-explanatory. These are also going to be floats, and these are going to be um, the distances that you can uh, you can hear the object. So these are the same ones you have in the level editor um, that when you when you go to like uh, uh, play a sound to create a sound, it asks you if you want to use custom uh, custom settings, and you can specify the um, the uh, the size of the uh, uh, sound. So this is pretty much the same thing. Um, it does the exact same thing here. You can specify the uh, the range of the sound. If you don't specify anything, um, let's say you do like negative one, uh, 1.0, uh, 1.0 F here. This will just set it to the default um, of the SNT file. Remember, I told you that there's um, default values for these sounds. Um, it will just use its default value. So if we do that for these two, it'll do that too. So it will set um, the min distance you can hear it will be the default and then the max distance will be the default. But you can change these and set these to whatever you want. Um, again, normally you'd put these if you're creating a sound because you don't actually have a sound object in your level to play. You, uh, you play you're play you playing it through your script here. Um, so this is this is the, the, uh, the a full function 
Um, of course, you don't need to have all these values. If you just wanna, if you just wanted to play the sound and that's it, you would you wouldn't really use any of these. If you plan on repeating the sound uh, multiple times, you might want to run run it with uh, with just these here. And um, if you want to really specify the details of that sound, you can add these in at the end here. Um, but um, I'm actually not gonna include any of these here. Uh, we're just gonna leave the true at the end here. So we're just gonna leave, um, since in our case, it's just a burning sound. We don't really, we're just gonna use the default settings that it has. Um, then we're just gonna leave uh, full volume and we're gonna set uh, to save the sound effect to be true um, since we since we plan on like using it twice um, So we'll go ahead and hit save here And we're just gonna execute it with uh, this line here by itself um, and um, And actually we're gonna add the line to stop the sound effect for the break bottle I believe so oh, we were on break bottle. So this will play the sound. So now we're gonna do the opposite of this we're gonna stop the sound and um, And for that we're gonna do sound and then we're gonna do, we're, we're gonna do uh, stop here. Uh, we're gonna do sound stop. And then we're gonna do uh, quotation marks here. And we're gonna put this sound right here. So this name that we gave it here. Um, as we said, this is to use in the script file. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll set that there. And then we'll go here, we'll hit comma. And, um, and then we will go ahead and set the next value which is fade time so we're going to do 1.0 f so we want it to fade away in one in one second um and that's pretty much it for stopping that sound um just as an extra note um we're playing a sound that the entity so we're playing it at chair one so we're gonna play a sound at chair one if let's say you wanted to play it at the player's position you could just type in player here and it will play it at the player's position but in this case um we just want to play it at the chair so we're gonna play it at the chair um and uh we're gonna go ahead and hit save here and uh, let me just double check that my level editor is saved then uh and it looks like it is so we'll go ahead and minimize here oh and let's and let's not forget our uh, our semicolon here and then let's start up the game all right so here we are back in our level um so let's go ahead and check out the sounds so um right now we go near the chair um nothing's happening the sound is playing uh there's no sound at all um and what we're gonna do is we're gonna break the bottle and the sound should start to play so let's go ahead and grab the bottle and let's get far away from the chair just so we're not in its range yet and of course this sound's gonna play here because we do have it enabled so let's drop it all right and let's go ahead and walk over this way if you, if you listen, you can hear that same burning effect is uh, playing right here on this chair. So we're going to go ahead and walk over here. And let's go ahead and interact with the door. And if we walk back over here, the sound stops, so you can't hear it anymore. Uh, so the sound is gone. So, um, yep, so that's it. So that worked fine. So that's how you play sounds. Um, that's how you play sounds by just... Um, by without an actual sound file being there just kind of like i would like to call it like on demand you play a sound on demand on the fly wherever you want um so that should get you guys going on playing some sound effects um i know these are just the uh the the uh pre-installed ones the ones that come with um the the game um we will be talking about custom sounds in, in a future episode but for now um this will help you guys start getting some sounds in your level and start uh getting a, a real good custom story going so i'm going to wrap it up here guys again uh, leave a leave a like comment on the video and subscribe if you're not already subscribed um and again uh been getting a lot of feedback as to what people want to see in future episodes and i'm taking note of every single one so uh if you have any more ideas you can always leave it in the comments and i'll uh and i'll uh put it on the list for things that we need to get to so um have a good day everyone bye